Hello, good morning and welcome back to the fish locker out on the coast. Now any locals watching this might immediately recognise that as being Perrinport. We're out early, you've got to go everywhere early at this time of year, it's silly season for the tourists. But if you want to get anywhere or get parked anywhere you need to get out early. But look at that, that is absolutely stunning isn't it? That looks like it would be a lovely sandy surf beach to fish. I think in a minute though you just end up catching surfers because there's about 30 surfers out there already. Today what I'm going to do is I'm walking along the coast, I'm taking my light, sip, my light spinning setup, maybe just chuck a couple of loads, a couple of baits. We're wrecking out this area of coast to come fishing later on in the year. I'm just going to see what I can find. Let's go! One of the problems, one of the beauties and one of the problems I guess, of areas of coast like this it's just how inaccessible the fishing marks are. And you see there by the cliff, there's no way you're getting down there. But <laughs> that would mean that there'd be nobody else can get down there. So I would generally say that the fishing down there would be good. The bit of swell running in, I guess which is what's making it good for the surfers. But whenever you come exploring or come fishing areas like this, swell can be very dangerous so watch the forecast be safe i do like that sound i like that sound when we're a distance away from it i don't really like that sound when i'm in amongst it Walking over little areas like this, I love having a look about because you never know what you're going to see at this time of day. I mean, the colder blooded things like your snakes and your lizards haven't yet come out to warm themselves up, but there's always stuff walking about. Another thing as well is the flora and fauna, I really enjoy looking at that. I mean, here we've got these are these yellow ones are bird's foot trefoil. You've got your bell heathers, which are just dying back, they've got all the little brown heads on, but these are red dead nettles. I think it's Lamium purpureum. But anyway, yeah, they're red dead nettles. There is always something to look at. And no matter how many times you come for a walk and stuff on places like this, there's always new things to see. Another talking point here, a couple of points. First thing is the rock. What you can see. We do get an awful lot of these quartz seams running through the rock here. The rock here is really hard. But another thing you might see, especially when you're walking on the coast of Cornwall, is the amount of lichen. Every single exposed rock usually is covered with a bit of lichen. That's a sign of really good air quality. Now there's three main types. I've covered this in other videos, but I'll just reiterate now. There's fruticose, folios, and crustose. Now crustose creates like a crust. So you can see like that there. A crust. Then we've got folios. Creates like foliage. Now, like them. Ooh, and they lost my footing then. <laughs> and the last one, fruticos. And I'll think of it this way. Fruticos, fruit trees, branches. So ones like this have branches. So three main types, folios, crustos, fruticos. Got some bell heathers. Now we have, we have missed a lot of the flowers. We do have some spots around here. These were primroses and those were sea pinks or sea thrift. Now they're lovely. I'll put a picture in here for what they look like. They've all passed their best. You can see them all around the place. But yeah, Earlier on in the year, they are stunning, bright pink. <laughs> you wouldn't take the wrong foot here on a night, would you? It wouldn't be long before you're in the water. There's an awful lot of sea carrot around this little patch. And that is these. Those, the ones with the big white heads. I don't like these. 
talking to uh, talking to the neighbour of my father-in-law of Jim Spago, who uh, who does the Spago cooking videos, and he's got a beehive. And we're talking to him about how the different flowers that the bees are feeding on can affect the honey. And I was thinking, well, yeah, actually, the area where I'm from in the northeast, North York Moors, we do have an awful lot of heather, and the bee owners. I can't remember what the name is for someone who keeps bees. They, um, they transport the hives up onto the heather, leave them for a couple of days to be able to feed on some of the heather to change the taste of honey. Yeah, you get some idea of the, how unforgiving the cliff is here now. Might have a little trot down there on the edge. But yeah, the spot where I'm hoping to go to is a bit down there. <laughs> Picked the wrong place to nail down, didn't I? In quite a few of our other coastal exploring, coastal foraging videos, you will see me find something called a rock samphire, and it's usually in like a little bush, it stands maybe eight to ten inches off the ground. This is the same thing. This is all still rock samphire, but I was just kind of almost interested to myself to think oh well I, I wonder why it's so stunted around here and then I thought well actually it's probably because the soil's not deep enough the ground's not deep enough yeah if you look these bushes are so stunted it's just because they've only got probably like a quarter of an inch of soil before you're onto like hard rock but yeah these if you tear these and smell it smells like really fresh like um, almost like pine needles yeah it's uh, great for seasoning things like fish yeah followed along all the way around the next headland so we've got some walking to do let's try something out let's try something out one two three definitely a faster way to travel this little spot that I've got to here you can see there is loads to see again you've got your red dead nettles your bell heather but we also have some lovely little outcrops of yellow gorse got your bracken ferns but even down here look I thought to myself, I thought, what are these? And I, when I had a closer look, there are the rose hips. That is a stunted rose. See how small it is? And these are the rose hips. But yeah, again, everything is really low, really stunted because of the depth of the soil and of the weather conditions like the prevailing winds coming up here nothing wants to stick its head up do they? Right, the curiosity in me thinks, oh, I like to have a look in there. But I've seen one too many horror films. Poke our head just in the entrance. <laughs> Famous last words. Hello! Not today. When you're out in these little exposed places, it does make me think, and I just think, I wonder how that's got here. Or I wonder why that's done that. And I've just, I've just noticed this here, look. This here is a little tiny stunted apple tree. Now that literally only comes up to like just above my knees. So again, it shows you just how shallow the soil is here. Oh. 
wonder how an apple tree ended up here. I'd like to think it was like back a while ago there'll have been, I don't know, a walker or a worker up here working on one of the mines. Sat looking at the view, sat having his picnic and had his apple and left his apple outside and then that's, that's sprouted a tree. Quite a lot of little rabbits kicking about. Just too fast to show you on camera. But yeah, there's areas up here that look like the surface of the moon. It's just... Very unforgiving terrain for plants. That's why you're just getting your things like your gorse and your heather. Really hardy stuff. You see all these orange flowers here behind me? There, there, there. See how they're just kind of tucked away? These are quite a common flower in Cornwall. They are lovely, I think they're called uh, Crocosmia montbrittia. Common montbrittia, part of the Crocosmia. There's a couple of them. There's one called uh, Crocosmia lucifer. And this one I think is montbrittia, the orange one. It is an invasive plant. But Aston, you can see why they've been brought over here. Brought over here as an ornamental and then escaped. Aston, I remember, <laughs> and this is one of those conversations where it's like, don't do as we've done because we didn't know any better back then. I remember growing up all the time, growing up as a kid, my mum used to have them in the garden. Them and a certain type of daisy. And I'm pretty sure that they were from a <laughs> visit to Cornwall when she was a kid. And like her and her mum collected some and brought it back up to Yorkshire. And we had them in our garden all the, all the way growing up. Yeah. I'll tell you what. It's glorious when the sun comes out. Stunning down here when the sun comes out. Yeah, that's what they are. Best time of day. Now anybody who can read the water, you can see there about the conditions. Wouldn't be a bad place to come for a little jaunt with a kayak when it's nice. Yeah, we're at some elevation now though. <laughs> I do always find that quite interesting, like all the different layers of rock. You know when I was mentioning that the, uh, the rock sapphire usually comes in little bushes? That there. And that there is what the rock sapphire is usually like. Now I'm just going to have a little bit of a scramble down there. See if I can't find a fish. Stay well away from the edge. I haven't brought my life jacket. Oh yeah. See if I can't winkle a fish out. I've got myself put down here. See where I am. And <laughs> I've thrown a lure around for a little bit and there's just too much suspended weed. And all I was doing was I was just, I brought a little pack of pieces. I've got some traces made up. I've got a couple of ragworms and I've got some leads. Anyway, I tried throwing around a couple of soft plastics. And all I did was I knocked myself up a little rass rig, which is just a one hook pattern of stuff. And baited it with a single ragworm and use like a one and a half ounce lead. I'm going to show you, I'm going to set the camera up down there because almost immediately when I switched over to the baits, I've got a nice wrasse. So I will set the camera up in a second and I will keep fishing, but I'll show you the first fish that I've had. Perfect little rock pool to keep him in as well. There he is.
Not bad for a first fish. Yeah, not bad for a first fish. I'll get him unhooked. I'll have a look at him. We'll slip him back. I'll talk you through the rig and I'll set the camera up and we'll try and get one more fish out. It is, it is too rough on that side. So I'm fishing into a little sheltered spot there and I, I should, I should really have a life jacket on. I'm staying a long way back from the edge. Nine times out of 10, I'll always bring one with me. And I thought, nah, I won't need one today. I'm only going for a look. Where are you going? You don't want to go in there. See them lice on his head. This is why, you see like how he's found himself into a crack there. That's why when you're fishing for them, you need to be right on top of them because they'll find a little crack or a cranny and they'll hide in it. I'll leave him cutting about in here for five minutes. This is the rig. This is it. Led to a standoff loop. And that is a size one J hook. Just very simple because you're fishing right down in the rough stuff, you, you're going to lose tackle. 25 pound braid, 20 pound leader, 15 pound trace. So hopefully if I get snagged, I will just lose the trace. Get baited up with a ragworm and see if I can't get another one. Calm down. Not the easiest of conditions to fish in, but still find a fish. Strip me that quick. <laughs> I think it's a cork wing bass. Just a little ballon. Tell it was a smaller one though. Right. I've just lost a really big one to a snag. And I don't know if you can see. But yeah, a big wave broke over the top of the rock and sprayed me. Time to go. Just taking a breather for two seconds. <laughs> it's quite steep when you're walking up at it. Yeah, it's lovely now, look at that. Yeah, the area where I got down to, the one that I wanted Recky out for shore fishing. It's only really fishable with no swell. There is a bit of swell today. I did have a good look around. Didn't get too close to the water. I did manage to get a couple of nice wrasse out, just too much suspended weight to fish with the lures and um, yeah as the tide started to flood in there was like, um, like a hole in one of the rocks 
a wave come through it and absolutely soaked me so <laughs> time to go I don't know if you can see but there is a seal down there try and zoom in so you can see it's just a little black dot but that's what it is quite a lot of seals around here um I sun's out lovely we'll have a little bit of a walk back towards the beach let's see if we can see anything on the way back I take quite a lot of pleasure in doing this I take quite a lot of pleasure in wrecking out my own marks now um, I have got a video on the channel already that shows you like the rough criteria that I use and how I go about finding them but nothing beats a bit of legwork going out and looking what a mark's actually like because there's only so much you can see from from maps from navionics from charts and that sort of thing. Yeah. I would definitely also recommend wrecking one out during the daytime I'll never go to a new mark that I've never fished before in the dark just because you don't know what the, the possible hidden dangers are could be all sorts especially areas like this where there's an awful lot of mine shafts looking at the species that we've already seen today I went straight out of the van there was a pair of chuffs I sat for a while and watched a pair of peregrine falcons I've seen eight or nine types of uh, seabird loads of rabbits around so yeah there's loads to see I mean even if I hadn't brought the fishing rod it would have been would have been a nice little walk out you can't help but love a little bit of course like this can you and take it from me the smell from the gorse and the heather is absolutely gorgeous Those lovely little blue flowers there in amongst the bell heather and the, the gorse those are called sheep's bit look a lot like, like a, a small cornflower yeah, lovely you see that guy there? That was one of the falcons I was talking about. You see it now, still cutting along there. But yeah, he just rose up out of here. Just rose up from down there. I just turned the camera off when he popped out. I might have caught him. Tell you what, Russian roulette, if you're a pigeon flying around here, get a few of them kicking about. I saw one one time, I was down in the Falklands, <laughs> believe it or not, I was fishing. I was fishing like a little stretch of river down in the Falklands with a couple of lads that I was in the Navy with. And all of a sudden I just heard this get <laughs> looked up behind us. There was a, like four or five mallards flying along. A peregrine falcon had come down out of the sky and absolutely nailed one of them. The fastest bird in the world in a dive, like 200 miles an hour just took the wings in go real high up and took the wings in it's just unstoppable you know, hit one of these ducks in mid-flight just absolutely disintegrated it I spotted this little mark here from up on the cliff up there and I thought I would just give it a try and it is it's pretty high up and it's pretty sheer might still get there might still be a raster well this place here is quite interesting because there's actually there's a blowhole somewhere in here I can hear it down in there you hear it there's a wave coming in hitting the cliff and pushing air up through I'm just going to try for another rest.
Well, amazingly, I've managed to pick up a little pollock. It's just covered itself in sand. <laughs> That there is a very sandy little pollock. It's not a big one, but it's a fish. Right, let's go somewhere else now. A bit windy here. And we're almost back to the beach now. Now, I don't know if you remember how many, how many surfers there was when we came here. Now look how many there are. There must be, must be 150 to 200 people in the water. So they say it's the early bird that catches the worm, but I guess it's the early surfer that catches the surf. But a lovely little walk out, wrecking out a new market I've not been to before. Definitely got potential, but only on times when there's no swell. I think smaller tides were no swell. Did manage to winkle out a couple of nice fish, a couple of stunning ballon wrasse, and a little pollock on ragworm as well. Yeah, just too much suspended weight to be able to fish with the lows. Um, I hope you've enjoyed joining me. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.